Okay. So as I said, we're going to have two prepared speakers, and our first prepared speaker today is Cindy Washam. And wait. <laughs> I have to pull up the special book. What did you do? It's okay. <sighs> Cindy Washam is an entrepreneur that leads with her creativity. She's currently being trained as a voiceover artist, and her skills, her skills have been sharpened through Toastmasters. And I'm really intrigued by this because I've tried this before, and I found out that my had a hearing loss at certain ranges, and that precludes me from being a voiceover artist because I cannot hear certain tones that professionals want emphasized in their messages. So I was very surprised to hear that. It's a challenge. People don't think, oh, voiceover artists, it must be really easy. It's harder than you think. It's harder than you think. So, um, yes, there's a training that's, that you have to do for it, and Cindy is being trained. She enjoys her time with her family, including cats, et cetera. Exercising, photography, and videography, and making a difference in others' lives. She's proudly married to Scott Washam, and her, her best friend. They have two adult kids and four grands. Cindy Washam, her speech is entitled, we are, We're Going to the Fair. Cindy. Dad, can we please go to the fair? I pleaded. Yeah, Dad, can we please go? Said my sister, Debbie and my brother Buddy. Well, the fair? Well, when does it start? Said my dad. His question gave me hope that we might be going to the fair. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. So I gave dad a flyer that I got from school that day, and I said, Dad, it's on this flyer. You can read all about it. So my dad takes the flyer and he reads it. He hands it back to me and he says, honey, I've got to work Saturday and Sunday. However, how would you all like to go to the fair this Friday night? Touchdown! <laughs> we were so excited, we started jumping up and down and shouting, we're going to the fair, we're going to the fair. Friday could not come quick enough. And all I could do at school was daydream about going to the fair. I said to my best friend Elaine, guess what? We are going to the fair. And I can't wait to get to the haunted house. Oh, the haunted house? I'm afraid of the haunted house. Not I, I said, because my dad will take good care of us. That evening, it was September, and night fell very quickly. At the dinner table, we were all seated, and all three kids were gobbling their food as fast as they could. Me and my sister, we finished our last morsel and jumped up, put our plates up, and ran to the door, only to be halted by the commanding voice of my mother that said, Cindy, Debbie, don't you go out that door. You wait on your father and your brother. And put on a coat, because it's going to be chilly tonight. My mom decided not to go because she had to work. But she knew my dad would take good care of us. Finally, off we go to the fair. And we're all in the car. And it was just as I imagined. We rolled into the grassy parking lot stopped. We flung open our doors, slammed it back, and ran towards the dark. And the neon lights that were above us said, welcome to the county fair. We rode the merry-go-round, the octopus, 
we went into the glass house and then the Ferris wheel. We had so much fun, but that fun brought an appetite. And the delicious aroma of hot dogs, french fries, and especially cotton candy aroused our senses. Debbie says, Dad, can we have some cotton candy? We're hungry. Well, sure. So off we go to the concession stand and we grab our colorful treat. It was a big, fluffy cotton candy, pink and blue, all swirled around a white paper coat. Does that bring back any memories to you? It did to me, and it tasted just like I remembered as it melted on my tongue. Then my dad says, okay, this is your last ride. Where would you like to go? The haunted house, I said. So off we go to the haunted house. And as we walked up, the doors to the haunted house seemed to be getting taller and taller. And there was an old crappit house on top of the entrance. And ghosts and goblins were popping out of the house. And we three kids had second thoughts. So as we walked up to the steps, there we were, and instantly, unnatural screams and yells filled our ears. And we started walking, and all of a sudden, bam, the door slams shut and it's pitch dark. Something weird started moving under my feet, and it was the floor. And I shouted, Daddy! And I heard my dad's assurance say, don't worry, it's okay, keep moving. Then all of a sudden, to my left, a light appeared, and it was a witch on a broom that flew across our heads with that same spine-chilling laugh. <laughs> and then, as quick as we saw it, it disappeared. And then another light appeared, and it was a strobe light of a zombie, and his arms raised in ragged clothes, moaning and groaning towards us. I screamed, and I fell down, but I grabbed my cotton candy just in time and <laughs> grabbed my sister's jacket to make sure she was there. Then, breathing in relief, I heard this unnatural voice right at my ear say, boom. I screamed, I fell down again, and this time I lost my cotton candy. <laughs> And I screamed out, Daddy, help me! And again, I heard his voice say, Don't worry, it's okay, keep moving, don't be afraid. Finally, the door flew open, and the lights of the fairground filled our thirsty eyes. And as we walked down the steps, we were crying and wiping our eyes in relief that we were finally free from the clutches of the haunted house. Then, as we were relaxing, I realized my cotton candy, so I called out, where's my cotton candy? My dad was in front of us, and he turned around, and he looked, and he said, <laughs> look on the back of your sister's jacket. And there it was, my cotton candy melted on the back of her jacket with the cone and all. And my sister's uh, cotton candy was on the back of my brother's jacket. In disappointment, it was time to go home. And as we walked back to the car in the dark, the music of the fairgrounds slowly slipped away. But the lights of the parking lot illuminated and greeted us to the car. And as I rode back in the car, I recalled our experience at the fair and how scared I was at the haunted house, but how safe I felt by the sound of my father's voice. And the voice is the moral of the story. So when difficult times scream louder than your confidence, grab back your courage by listening to the voice of your heavenly father through his word, and you will find confidence. And you will get a permanent season's pass to God's heavenly fair. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank <laughs> you.